G'day YouTube, this is the maddest man, Matty here speaking. Anyway, here we've got the internal, or inside of the uh, GQ Patrol. Uh, I have just fitted a nifty little sensor, which will, might tell you if your car is not running properly. Anyway, what I've mounted there, and I'm going to make a little bit of a note later on to what it actually does. It's a exhaust gas analyzer. Uh, basically, you got a board that you buy from J Car Electronics, and you uh, solder it up yourself, which takes about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how fast you want to be and how accurate. Uh, you then tune it. You can tune it on the bench or on the outside of the car, um, and you can mount it inside a box, or you can mount it in a dash like I have. And the reason why I mounted in the dash is because this bracket used to be screwed up up here so I had two holes already so all I've done is elongated the holes to fit the board in up in behind the dashboard um, another thing that I've actually done is I've mounted the microphone from the Bluetooth system in the dashboard next to the steering wheel instead of having it as this ugly looking round thing that was sitting up here and always falling back and falling down um, so anyway, all it requires is plus minus, um, and a signal from your, uh, exhaust gas, uh, oxygen sensor. Um, most cars have them, um, anything built after about 1990 will most likely have a exhaust gas analyzer in the car, uh, or should I say an oxygen sensor, um, all you have to look for is uh, go down your exhaust and have a look for a little, um, basically, something that sticks out of the exhaust with wires. And some have uh, one wire, and some have three, and some have two, some have four wires. So, um, depending on what type, if it's a single wire, it's easy. You just splice into it and solder your wire onto it. I wouldn't recommend using... Uh, crimp joins or anything like that because as you can imagine the exhaust temperatures get in excess of 300 degrees and that join will not last long so let's uh, start her up just make sure she's in neutral here because the last time I did this I actually ran my table over there because I didn't even notice that I had the thing in first gear so <laughs> it started up so as you can see, this one, I've already had this running. It will start up in the midway position or down low and it will slowly work its way up. Now don't expect it to give you a signal or an accurate signal straight away. At times it can take a little bit of time. So here we go. Here's a thing working, that's on petrol at idle. And you'll see that it should be going, it should be staying within the green region. Uh, some cars will idle on the rich end, but a GQ Patrol will tend to either idle around there or idle actually coasting. It depends on your engine heat. As you can see, this uh, the head is running at 67 degrees at the moment. And I've got the temperature watch dog in here. So it, after a bit of a drive, it will actually ease off and it will start to coast up and down at idle. But a way to know if your sensor is working correctly is See how quick that's acting. On petrol, the oxygen sensor should be flickering about 15, at least 15 times a minute or more. Actually, I'd say more, more like 20. If it's not doing that on petrol, either you have a carburetor or there's something wrong with the oxygen sensor or your fuel system. Not all cars will go to absolute um, lean. Lean's on the left, rich is on the right. Not all cars will lean right down when you uh, decelerate. Uh, some will actually keep their uh, sensors, or the, should I say the fuel map, quite in the mid-range position. It's quite normal that the thing moves up and down as the computer tries to decide where it wants to put the stoichiometric, which is stoichiometrics usually in the green region of this uh, kit. So now it's going lean. 
sometimes and it goes up as long as it goes up you know every so often and it doesn't always just stay on lean it's normally okay so we'll, we'll change it over the gas now as you can see gas will probably act much much different and in most cars it will uh, because you're looking uh, the gas system in most cars is a carburetted gas system and they use a oxygen analyzer and use a poppet valve to control your gas pressures from the uh, converter into the mixer and that basically I've got one down here this is a very common one uh, Peel Electrics and it's got an idle lamp which is that green one over there and it's telling me that one's telling me it's rich but it's not very accurate but so let's just give that a rev now this will take longer gas usually takes longer but it should do the same thing but a bit slower so as you can see it's moving up and down now the best way to test this is to actually do it on the road um, best way to test gas is to bring it on the road and basically put your foot down and see if the lamp stays in the richer regions. If your lights just turn down and go out to lean and never go rich on gas or on petrol, you have an issue with the gas system tuning or petrol tuning or actually tuning not petrol, oh, sorry uh, petrol it's not the tuning, it'd be something wrong with the car. Uh, a very common fault found in most cars is a uh, faulty coolant sensor, uh, MAP sensors, MAF sensors, uh, vacuum leaks and things like that will cause all sorts of problems when uh, accelerating blocked fuel filters, uh, faulty injectors, you name it, it can cause a hell of a lot of problems. Never ever go straight to ECU and blame it because most of the time it will be something small that costs about 20 bucks to replace. As you can see the gas stays on the rich end. Uh, this system runs a open loop gas system on idle. So as you can see there, when the accelerator is at idle, the light's on. As soon as I put my accelerator on, it actually, there's a the lean light there. So this one's, that one's showing me lean, and as you can see there, The system's telling me that it's leaning right down to just about no signal at all. There are other types of gas systems which uh, operate a little bit more slowly, like the new appeal system that uses a lean, uh, a lean bias. This is a rich bias, as you can tell when you idle. Do not freak out if you're going down a hill and you basically see these sensors read nothing. Uh, that's quite normal on deceleration and heavy braking. This, this car will do it on both fuels. So now we switch that. The best way to know to switch it back to petrol and how on idle is to switch the thing into the neutral position. Wait till it nearly goes out and put it on petrol. There we go, so it's building up its speed again. It's still running a bit lean. That's just my fast idle kicking in, because I didn't know what to do. So as you can see, it's pretty normal. Works beautiful. Anyway, that's the Mattis Man for this little video. Have a nice day. Over and out.